been one of those days. Uh, we're going to talk about safety for a little while. Uh, <coughs> we carry workman's comp insurance on employees for a reason, so that if you're on a job and you should happen to get hurt, you know, you can go to the hospital, you can go to, you know, walk-in clinics or doctors or whatever, if things happen. And people always go, well, what's dangerous? The question, if you lost your eyesight tomorrow, what good are you? You're just a guy walking around and can't see. So, tools. That little thing right there. That'll put an eye out. That'll cut a finger off in a split second. All right? So, safety is a very important thing. For one thing, whoever you're working for should provide you with safety glasses. Uh, it's very important because your eyes are very important. Put this down. Yeah, put that cut through that thick plastic. Does the same thing to a finger, guys. Pay attention to what you're doing. Safety. This is for cleaning drains. Take your finger off right now. Okay? It comes out. This is the little one. Fingers are gone. That goes on the end of a drill. How long do you think it would take for that to go through your hand? Not very long. Just about every tool that you're going to use in plumbing can hurt you. Dumb as it may seem, it's tape measure. Pull it out, lock it in place. A lot of guys like to put their fingers on it. Feel the edge of that tape measure. I didn't cut my head. Guess what that'll do? So when you release it, the hands are out of the way. Nothing worse than, than a slice off a tape measure. It happens all the time. So what we do is when, when a new guy slices himself with a tape measure is we put primer on it. <laughs> and let him scream and holler for a few minutes and then he realizes, I'm not going to do that again. You're using a pair of wire cutters and you pinch yourself. If it's not made by channel lock, and it don't have a blue handle, don't buy it. Because channel locks will break fingers in a minute. You don't find many plumbers that are going to wear gloves when you're working with this stuff, you know, because it's hard to work with a pair of gloves to get a real, get a wrench on there and tighten those up. So. But anytime you're working with something that's cutting, it's powered, safety glasses, guys. Protect your eyes. Oh, yeah, my favorite. This, this one here will cut off a foot in a minute. This little apparatus. That right there will cut through six inches of concrete and take your foot off so quick you never even know it happened. So, when you're all bent over and you're running it and you come back and that foot is in the way, guess what? So much for that foot. Safety is what it's all about, being aware of what's around you and what you're doing. Sawzall. Same thing. Whether it be battery or it be electric. Piece of pipe, you got it up there. Next thing you know, finger gone. So safety, 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 guys. Right there behind you on that cart is an 80-pound jackhammer. You know why they call it an 80-pound jackhammer? Because it weighs 80 pounds. That thing will bust concrete, it jumps around. It loves to break toes. You know, a lot of guys try to use the jackhammer and push it. They're not made to push, they're made to do it by themselves. You just hold it. Stay relaxed. Let it do the work. When you try to force it, that's when you're going to get hurt. You're going to hurt your back, your shoulders, your arms. You're going to get old and stupid like me. Tools are essential to the trade. The reason why we don't do shorts at work. Protect your legs. You're crawling underneath trailers. You don't know what's up there. It could be a piece of glass. It could be anything. 
you know, spider. You can only see see so much, and when you got bare skin hanging out there, you don't know what's going to happen. My guys, I recommend if they're doing a lot of cutting with the saws and stuff, like if we're on a bigger job, long sleeve shirt. Because if you ever cut cast iron and a piece of that hot cast iron comes off and lands on your hand on your own, you got scars everywhere, especially from welding. I can't stress it enough, guys, because you get hurt. First off, here's what's going to happen. It's bad you're going to the hospital you know, in an ambulance. You know, you cut something off, we're going to pick it up, stick it in a bag, and send it with you. As soon as they get you in the trauma unit, first thing they're going to do is, is they're going to draw blood while they're working on it. And that blood's going to go straight to the laboratory. They're going to test you for drugs. You know, if it comes back, with illegal drugs or alcohol in it, then you're going to be a broke mofo because workers' counts not going to You're impaired and you can, and you're doing your job, and you get hurt, whether it's smoking weed or whatever. If it comes back in a blood test, workers' comp will deny the claim that you are personally responsible. As a business owner, I don't want nobody getting hurt. I've had guys done stupid stuff. I had a guy got something in his eye. I'd go to the hospital and they had to dig it out because he wasn't wearing safety glasses when he was out there with a jacket. If I catch you doing it, I'll tell you about it the next time you're looking for a new job. Everything we work with, guys, is sharp. It's crazy. It is. Uh, if it has a nut on the end of it, we use a nut grinder. We don't use screwdrivers. The screwdrivers slip, you go through your hand. Very clean gravity. There's a house over here, outside the yard. Put stuff the tank in the ground. They can average, depending on the size of the house, anywhere from 300 to 900 gallons. So they go by bathrooms, they go by bedrooms. Why do they go by bedrooms instead of bathrooms? Because the amount of people that are going to be in there. So they assume if you have a four bedroom house, you're going to have eight people in the house. Septic tank. Food comes in, goes to the bottom of the tank, right here. Tank fills up with water. Poop stays down here. Red boats eat it. But the liquid goes out. Right here on the outlet keeps the solids from going into the drain field. This liquid eventually filters out into the drain field. It's anywhere between four and 800 square feet. Where basically what it is is uh, there's different drain field materials. We use what they call Easy Flow. It's a styrofoam and this big wrapper it looks like a net and it has you lay it in, you lay it in rows. It has tubes going through it. Water passes through it, filters out through the styrofoam. We drive down the road during a drought. If you ever notice the people's front yard, you get that green patch of grass. Yeah. Everything else is brown. That's the drain field. A lot of people don't realize you don't park on a drain field. You don't park on the septic tank with your cars. You pull in the front yard, you collapse the drain field, and you collapse that septic tank. You're talking thousands of dollars. The drain field not only drains down, guys, it drains up. That's why they can only be 12 inches deep. The sun comes down, heats the ground, it evaporates it, and goes back up. It's a cycle. The ground can only take so much, evaporation takes care of the rest. That's why in Florida, drain fields work good. Certain states you can't use, you have to use what they call a, uh, it's called leach pits. It's weird. They have cattails in them, and the liquid's actually on top of the ground. And it smells like high heaven. If it's under one acre, you have to put in these new drain fields now that are called uh, potassium free. It's basically putting a small lift station in your front yard. And every once in a while, there's a lid on both sides. Come in, you gotta dig it up. Pump truck sucks all the solids out of your tank. Septicade, Ridex, that's a live amoeba. You put it in your tank, in the bugs. In Spring Hill, Unless you're in a subdivision, certain areas like uh, Wellington, uh, the Oaks, Timber Pines, a few others, they have sewer systems that were put in before they built. The front of Spring Hill, from Deltona up to 19, it's all sewer systems. They were put in before they built the houses. It would cost too much money right now to put in sewer mains in the rest of Spring Hill. So, in EPA's infinite wisdom, the Environmental Protection Agency, they said we'll put in phosphorus-free tanks instead. In Florida, you can only fertilize your lawn four months out of the year. 
as a homeowner. However, a commercial company can do it 12 months out. And when it rains, it runs off, gets into the aquifer system, and causes phosphorus issues. That's where it all comes from. If you do come to work in the plumbing trade, when you show up for work, my suggestion is we pair of tennis shoes or pants. One of the things you do is if, if somebody hires you, ask them, what's the dress? The plumbing companies, if you're out there doing roughs, they'll let you wear shorts. Yeah, because it's 100, it's 100 degrees out there, guys. Uh, drink a lot of fluids. Man, I'm telling you, a lot of fluids. It gets hot. I'm sweating my horse right here. Horse is a dangerous place to work. You get hurt really bad. I can have heat stroke. The bigger you are, the more susceptible to each stroke you are. There ain't a company out there that's going to stop you from going to take water. Now, if you live at the truck drinking water, that would be no problem. I don't push my guys in the heat because I know it's I know what it's like. When you're digging, you're laying pipe, running back and forth, you get overheated, get in the truck, turn it on, get the car up there, just close up. I will never ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do. The most important thing is, is wash your hands a lot. If you come out of a house and you're working in a house, wash your hands. Working on septic tanks, you gotta get worried if somebody's shit. Wear plastic gloves, wash your hands. If for some reason or another you're cleaning out a line and it blows up on you, and go inside the house, get the water hose, wash it up there. It's gonna happen, I'm telling you. It hurt a minute. You know, you reach in to grab a saw and you grab the blade, or something falls off the shelf, cuts your arm. Plumbing is not a labor job. It requires thinking. Don't really need algebra. Don't need trigonometry. But you goddamn well better know decimals and fractions. When you're reading a print, which we'll, we'll do, I'll actually bring up a, a print and we'll go over it. And I'll show you what a print looks like. It has measurements on it. How many of you here can read a tape measure? Because if I tell you, which I'm going to do, I'm going to give you some pipe. Next week, we're going hands on. I'm going to hand you a tape measure and say, cut me a piece of pipe. 13 and a quarter inches long. And if you hand it back to me at 13 inches, a quarter inch is a big difference when it comes to putting pipe together. The bigger the pipe, the less you're concerned about accurate measure. The smaller the pipe, the smaller the area, the more the, especially copper. But what copper cost? You know, you cut a piece of copper wrong, it's wasted, you know, three inch copper. You cut it wrong, you can't use it anywhere else. I just throw $300 away. Measurements are very important. Mark's got cutting tools, tape measures he's going to bring next week. Next week we're going to work on gluing pipe, priming it. Some pipe you have to prime. People go, well, why do you put primer on a pipe? Well, pipe comes with a coating on it. It's an oil. Well, that pipe's made from oil, guys. It's made from petroleum products. That's why pipe is expensive now, because it's made from petroleum. So what the primer does is it takes the oil film off of the pipe. So when you put the glue on it and you put those fittings together, it adheres and it sticks. If you don't prime it, you're going to have a leak. The coating on the pipe or the inside of the fitting is going to create a leak because the glue won't adhere to it. There's two kinds of primer. There's purple and there's clear. Now, if you're working in somebody's house underneath their sink and you're, and you're gluing pipe together, I want you to use clear primer because you can see it. The last thing you want to do is go to somebody's house and do that. Under their kitchen sink. It's messy, guys. It's messy. It is. It splatters. goes all over the place. Now, do you know why we put purple primer on a drain fitting? So the inspector can see it. That's the only reason we use purple primer. So the inspector can see it. If you didn't prime the pipe, you'll fail it. Any white pipe has to be primed. CPVC pipe, the yellow pipe that we talked about last week, yeah. water pipe, does not need primer. Make from a different chemical, but it's a different glue. It's not the same glue you use on white pipe. It's called CPVC glue. It's yellow. Same color as the pipe. So CPVC glue is yellow. PVC glue is clear. Now we have another kind of glue. Oh Jesus, I just got used to the clear and the yellow. Now we got blue. Blue glue. Let's say you've got a piece of pipe and you got a little bit of water on it and you can't get it to quit dripping. You use primer on it, you use white glue on it, you put it together, it's still going to leak because you can't use clear glue if there's water present. It won't adhere to the pipe. Blue glue is called wet and dry. You can actually take that blue glue and put it on there, put it on your fitting, put them together, it will adhere and seal. 
and the water won't affect it. What, on repair, when we're repairing water lines, we use blue glue outside. We use blue glue because it dries faster and you can work on it in a wet environment. You can be out there in a rainstorm and glue pipe together and it's not going to affect it. White glue will not stick to a wet pipe. So that's why they tell you to make sure that you clean your pipe off and dry it, prime it, then glue it. So if you don't, then you stick. Now when you cut the end of a piece of pipe, cutters aren't going to do this, hand cutters. But let's say you use a sawzall. You cut the end of this pipe. These are rookie cuts. Gonna, this is one I cut out of a house because it leaked. You know why it leaked? What don't you see? No primer. So it leaked. When you cut this pipe, it's going to have burrs on it. Take your finger. That's a burr. Get it out of there. Clean it off before you put that into another pipe because that burr is going to cause a piece of toilet paper. So it's called deburring. D e b u r r i n g. Deburr. And it's a hell of a lot easier to do it right the first time than mm -hmm. try and cut it and put it back together in a second time. Carry your rag in your pocket, wipe the end of your pipe, deburr it, prime the living shit out of it, prime your fitting, glue it, glue the pipe, glue the fitting, put them together, give it a little twist. Never put it where you're going to start. Always put it and twist it. What that does is it allows the glue to lock in. Most drain fittings you can do that because you're going to, I'm going to show you how to use a level on a drain fitting when we start gluing next week. So you better make damn sure things clear so when you slide it together you've got plenty of glue. I would rather you use a, a lot more glue than a lot more fittings. You're going to go home at night and you're going to be picking glue off your fingers for a week. Because if you dry fit it, you're going to get a lift. I understand once all these pipes are put together, they have to be put under test. And it has to have a five foot column, which is about 40 pounds per square inch when you fill that up. So if there's a fitting that's not held together, even though it's not a pressure pipe, it'll leak. All primer is is a cleaning agent. It okay. takes off the coating of petroleum that's gotcha. on that pipe. Right. That allows that pipe to be virgin, so when you glue it with glue, it'll adhere to the other pipe. Because glue chemically breaks down the PVC and causes a lot of things that you're going to encounter you don't know. I tell you, run that piece of pipe and tie it in over there. I go inside. You're not sure what you're doing, you just go ahead and do it. And I come back out and all the angles are wrong. Guess what? There's probably $200 worth of pipe money there that I cut out and start over. I mean, Dennis, I'm not sure, man. I got the, which way this 45 goes. And, which way this has got to be pitched, I'm not sure. I'd rather come up and show you, because if I show you, then you're going to remember. I ain't never met a boss or a company yet to fire somebody because they asked because they didn't know. I've met them that's gotten fired because they didn't ask. Be truthful on your application. You got a back problem. You know, you got to you got to you got to know coming into it, whatever you do. I don't care who you work for. I don't care if you're frying hamburgers or your brain stuff. <laughs> you know, if you've got medical issues, you need to disclose it. I hired a guy one time. Great application, tons of experience. Halfway through the day, I got my plumber calling me, telling me the guy can't breathe. Well, why can't he? Well, he's had four heart attacks. Excuse me? <clears throat> it's 120 degrees outside. He's out there, I got him out there digging with a shovel and he's had four heart attacks. Why? Because he didn't disclose. I had to let him go. I call it brown bottle disease. You get drunk on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and you can't come to work on Monday. You don't make it in this field. Monday is our busiest day. You don't show up on Mondays here, you don't go to work. 